Hello there. Welcome to this guide on breeding. In this guide, we're going to go through the basics, everything you kind of need to know to get started, as well as uh, some good combinations, how to make cake, where to find basically the pals needed to make cake, and also some good combinations for early game in order to get your base a flying start with some of the best worker pals around. With that out of the way, let's just get started with the, the most important thing, which is, of course, the breeding farm. This thing gets unlocked at level 19, which means that up until that point, you can start preparations, but you can't start the breeding process. The second thing you're going to need is this thing over here, the cooking pot. It is the first uh, thing that allows you to make cake, which is required. Each cake equals one pal egg. So as you can imagine, pretty important for your breeding experience. The cake itself is made by five ingredients. Flour, which is made by wheat, which you run through a mill. Pretty straightforward. If you are struggling to find wheat seeds, there is one place you can actually buy them. The trader over here in the small settlement will be selling wheat seeds if you do require them. And uh, that will make it fairly easy. But berries, you probably already have a berry farm. That one is simple. Milk, eggs, and honey are also pretty straightforward, actually. As you can see here, the chickpeas makes eggs. The mozzarella makes milk. And our bee guard over here makes honey. Next up, we're going to have a quick look at where you can find basic mozzarella and bee guard because let's face it, chickpeas you can find everywhere. The mozzarella's main habitat is over here, which isn't that far away from your spawn. Just head somewhat east, a little bit northwest. Sorry, northwest, west rather than east. And you should be able to find a lot of them. They're usually around level 10 to 15, so they shouldn't be too difficult to capture. The bee guard lives directly north from uh, where we spawn, which is down here. And it does have a huge living area. Do keep in mind, though, however, that this uh, pal will be around level 20, making it a little bit more difficult to catch. It also has a self-destruct attack, so you might need to, well, take your time to get one. But uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to pick one up. You'll be able to do it for sure. Now, once we've got a couple of those pals and uh, they've made the ingredients, we want to go over here and make a cake. Now, this is actually a very long process, so I would recommend to get a good kindling beast. We, If you only have the uh, fire parks, that's fine. But as you can see here, we, it is going to take a long time if you're trying to do it yourself. So try and make, uh, or at least get someone to do it for you. Every little bit of help does, in fact, help. Also, as you capture more of the chicky peas, the bee guards, and the mozzarellas, I would really recommend going into the pal condensation menu and condense them. Basically, this is a way to star up your pals. And what starring up does is that it improves their passive for these guys. So why do we want to improve the passive? It's actually pretty straightforward. By improving their passive, we'll be able to increase the amount of uh, products or rather drops they give. So increasing the partner skill working between level two would give more honey drops. Same here for the egg layer of the chicken piece would give more eggs. And as you can imagine, that means that you can over time have a ranch running with just three of these and probably overwhelm your, well, production to some degree. However, first condensation is four, the second is 16, then 32 and 64. Means you're gonna need a lot of combinations, but at least getting, well, one of them to level four and doing something like this should be doable. Switch one of these bee guards out with either a chicken pea or a mozzarella, whichever resource you're lacking, and you'll be good. Now, once you have obtained your cake, you go ahead and put it in this chest that is attached to the breeding farm. And as you can see here, as long as it's in the breeding farm, it doesn't deteriorate, meaning that you can actually store these indefinitely and not have them spoil. Once you've find, found a pair that you want to go ahead and combine, the easiest way is just to pick them out. You can actually combine any pal with any other pal. So if we really want to here, we could take a mozzarella, pick it up, apply to the breeding farm, like so. And then we're going to have to find a compatriot. Again, you can take any female pal. You can take, in this case, a Joltog as our example. And you can breed them together. So this does work. You can breed any pal with any pal, which will give you, for the most part, somewhat random results. But every pal actually has a fixed result depending on who they're bred with. If you go to paltrainer.com, there is actually a very, very good breeding calculator there that will tell you any combination of pal who they can be bred with, and what their result would be in terms of the egg they lay. Now, once they've actually laid an egg, like over there, you're going to need an egg incubator to kind of hatch them. They are ancient tech, 
As you can see here, they're fairly cheap. You do need some ancient sieve parts, cloth, pallium fragments, and stone. And you're going to have to put the eggs in there to hatch them. Once that process is done, you'll have a new pal. Now, in terms of the pals that I said I would recommend for early game, we do have a few. The main one is going to be Anubis, and you can breed Anubis by just using a Relaxosaurus, which is fairly easy to find. He is kind of hiding out in the same area as the Mozarinas, a little bit further to the northwest, but he too can be caught fairly early. He's usually around level 15. Combine that with a Celery, and you will get yourself an Anubis. Now, the Anubis is a great pal because it can do handiwork level 4, meaning that it's incredibly quick at building, it's incredibly quick at crafting, as well as mining level 3, which means it can mine most things. And not only that, the Anubis is a very tiny pal, meaning that it very rarely gets stuck or gets into in trouble, which makes it excellent for use in your base. And also, it's an amazing combat pal. So it's kind of a jack of all trades and will do base work very, very well. Once we have our Anubis, we want to take that one and breed it with a Van Verm. And the reason why we're doing this is to get our hands on a Phalaris. Now, Phalaris is a level 3 Fire Pal, as well as level 3 Transport. Uh, we're actually more focused on the Fire part, though, and also the fact that it is the quickest air mount before you get to Jet Dragoon, which is the absolute fastest mount in the game. But he's also locked behind level 50 for his um, saddle. Polaris can be ridden at level 38, and if you do go ahead and quickly level up by catching 10 of every pal that you can, as well as looking for eggs in new areas that you travel to, hatching those, you should be getting to level 38 fairly quickly. And we do want to breed this guy with, well, Runner, Swift, and also Nimble. You can put all those three perks on him, giving him extra 60% movement speed. There's also Legend perks, but you won't get that until you actually fall one of the, well, Legends. So... Wouldn't really recommend messing around too much with that, but yeah, you can start breeding this guy early. And once you get 38, you'll get a pal that is incredibly quick. I do have an example here. And this guy, as you can see, does move around incredibly quick. Now, he does have kind of break problems because of that. But as you can imagine, that is a fairly quick pal and one that can do a lot for you. Which is, again, why we want to get started on breeding it fairly early. Our next combination here is Penking and Lambol, which gives a Vadash, which is one of uh, my more favorite base pals. Can do everything related to gardening, planting, harvesting, can also do handiwork and lumbering, which puts it into a very good multi-task perspective or multi-task uh, pal. Very, very nice to have. If you feel the planting level is too low, though, you can do a Tombat and a Chillet and get a Petalia, who is better at planting and can also do medicine instead of woodworking. But generally, these two are the same, but Dash will still do an amazing job. Now, as you might have mentioned, none of these three are watering pals and cooling pals for that matter. Uh, I don't feel cooling is necessarily worth it. Taking up a slot for that just doesn't make much sense to me. And as such, I've ignored it. For electricity, you'll usually be able to find univolts fairly early on. They are fairly low level, level 2 electricity. Should be anything you'll need to produce that. And for water... We can, of course, use pangolets, wax, and, you know, the base level ones. But what I'd recommend doing, unless you find an Azerobe on the southern uh, Safari Island, if you go there, is to actually pick, go and fight the boss. The Azerobe get, is a level 3 watering pal, which will cover all your watering needs to, to, basically for the rest of the game. So you don't really have any big concerns in that department. And as I said, for me, cooling isn't a big deal. If it is for you, let me know in the comments below. I'll find a combination that works. But yeah, these are basically the four pets that I would, or pals rather than pets, that I would really recommend you to pick up early game. Anubis is amazing, Badash is amazing, Fatality can be amazing too, but hilarious for anything fire related like smelting ores and cooking. And you have a very, very strong lineup. Basically, these three alone, with the help of an Acerobe and a Uni Vault, can run a base on their own. So yeah, that's it for the basic breeding guide. We didn't go too much in depth into it because honestly, breeding in this game is pretty simple and straightforward. It's the combinations that are kind of hard to manage. But as long as you get the ingredients for your cake, you should be fine. As long as you get that cake cooked, you should be fine. And then you just put them into the uh, box here. And as you can see, breeding goes very quickly. We already have an egg here. Now, one thing to do keep in mind is that if you place these uh, breeding huts in the wrong location, 
you could end up with this middle part with the eggs born underground. As you can see there, we could only see the top part of the rocky egg. So do keep that in mind. You usually be fine though. This is a bit of a better spot where we can actually see the entirety. So if you place a breeding base here, nice flat corner. But yeah, the flatter the land where you place it, the better. I think that was everything. I think we have everything covered here. As I said, go to paltrainer.com. Um, they do have an amazing breeding calculator if you're looking for a particular pal. If not, trial and errors can be fun. But honestly, someone did data mining. There's over 18,000 combinations of uh, pal breeding. So trial and error might just make you a little bit insane. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If it has helped you, please like and subscribe as that helps me out a ton as well. And I hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye.